Oh my god, I'm sorry I'm a bit late. I said I was gonna start at five. Um it's 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 hi. Um hang on a second. My chat's going weird. That's better. Okay, I can see it now. Hi everybody. Um yeah, so the reason why I'm late. Hi, heads up. Let this all be a little bit of a a thing as well. So, <laughs> I have 
one, two, three, four, five external hard drives connected up to my PC. And one of them is um, my F drive is all my archive of music from like 2009 to now. And it's backed up like I have. Uh, this is it. This is so this is F drive, old F drive 2023. And then in 2024, I started up a new one and I always hot swap them. Number one, they're a bit cheaper. So they just come like this. And then I put them in a, um, a chassis, whatever it's called, um, or a hot swap. Thing like this and it wouldn't turn on my new one wouldn't turn on hi china rose and i was like shit <laughs> no so i went through it i went through everything i turned everything off and on again um and I worked out what it was in the end. It's because it's always switched on. So the 12 volt thingy power pack, I think is just overheated, which it doesn't matter where it is. It is, it's first world issues. Yeah. So it, it was a kind of a panic, even though I didn't panic because I knew it wouldn't be like a read-write thing. Well, I was pretty sure it wasn't. And um, I think that the moral of the story is back up your shit. <laughs> so now that I've figured out where the issue was, it's working again because I've swapped it out with another 12-volt um, battery. Not battery, a 12-volt power pack. Um, I need to buy another one to replace the one that I'm using now. Um, but let this just, I just wanted to start off the show by saying, can you, everyone please remember to back up their music and make sure you've got all of your projects backed up. Um, I can't use the ones that go in the cloud because I always found them really finicky. They always started to download everything from the cloud back onto my PC and whenever I tried to 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 sort it out it would it was just a nightmare and then there'd be duplicates of everything and then it wouldn't upload like loads and loads and loads of little files and stuff so i gave up i gave up trying to do this whole like automatic um automatic save into the cloud i save to the cloud but i do it regularly but manually um what am I looking for? 12 volt power supply. Okay. I want a really good one. I'm just having a quick look on on Amazon. Oh my God. There's some really weird ones here. I, I'm not going to buy one of these, by the way, and I don't think you should either. But they've got, let me just show you a photo of this. Can I just share my display? I should be able to share my display. Uh, display capture. Um, one sec transform fit to screen there we go look at this look i don't trust this because look it's got like these it's got like a thing where like it's different adapters that to me seems like it would have a break in the um in the outage like, that does not look like what I'm after. Or am I just being overly cautious? Like, that that to me is not a good idea. Like, to have that and then just have, like, different, like, types of it. Do you know what I mean? 
Like, it just looks a little bit, like, wrong. <laughs> Something a gadget dad would buy. Yeah. Hi, Hamish. Oh, Ke Hamish has got two of them. Made in Taiwan. That's all right. Um, but, yeah, personally, I don't think that that's probably what I should have. Um, so, yeah, back up your stuff. Oh, fuck off. I've done something that I really didn't want to do. Shit. Shit. Shit, shit, shit. Hang on. Bollocks. Does anyone know the, the key for the F key for coming out of full screen on a program? Yeah, I tried F11. I, do you know what I think it is? I think there's an issue with... Um, with my OBS. Flevin. Flevin. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Oh, fuck. Um, it'd be fine. It, it's just... It, it's just... It's just... Oh, fuck. View. Always on top. Take that off. No, it, it's... There's an issue with my version of... OBS where when I make it full screen I can't take it I can't minimize it or change the size of it if I if I maximize it so escape I don't think it's escape no no it's not it's not one of the it's not one of the obvious ones is I think it's just literally a, a, a problem with the this version of OBS that I've got it's fine drag the bottom frame up no oh hang on oh -ho -ho! yes 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 alien arcane 42 you absolute legend. And you know what? I'll, I'm going to share my screen with you again now to show you what's going on. You see this corner? See the little, the little pixels there? Bottom right. There. There you go. And it's even got a thing. It's because of its being stream elements. Because I've got stream elements installed on my um, OBS. It messes it up. But yeah, there we go. Thank you, Alien. Yeah, it's annoying, isn't it? But thank you, because the only way that I've been able to, to sort that out up until now is to restart my stream or to, sorry, restart OBS. Brilliant. Oh, I am happy. See, and again, what's the moral of the story? Hive mind. Hive mind helps all of us. I love you, mate. But yeah, I'm not going to get that 12 volt interchangeable one because it just, it doesn't feel right to me. I'll, I'm gonna, I'll have a proper look later. So welcome everybody. Thank you for being here for the demo drop. Today we have got, um, thank you, Craig. Today we've got lots of things to listen to. If anyone wants to talk about any plugins or any VSTs that they really like, that'd be lovely as well, darling. Um, I've got a track of mine I'm going to show you as well. That was why in the beginning I was trying to get on my F drive because I wanted to get my whip. I wanted to get my whip out. So I'll just get my whip out and then we will get started with the first whips 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 okay um it's that one okay copy paste okay so now i'm um i'm also like 
copying over loads of my project files just in case something goes wrong with that drive again which like I said I don't think it is now because it seemed to be the um the power pack because I'm so lazy when I turn my computer off at night I switch it off I power it down but I leave it switched on at the wall and because I'm running one two three external hard drives and two internals, the three external ones that never turn off. Um, so don't be lazy because you'll have to keep buying new power packs. Turn everything off at the wall. How long is the whip? <laughs> Hi, some guy called Pete. It's not that long, it's average. <laughs> okay, let's stop being silly now. Is it hard disk drive? Make sure the heads are parked before turning the power off. Make sure the heads are parked. The heads are parked. What do you mean? What do you mean the heads? Are you are you on about like floppy disks? How yeah, how does one part of their head? So if you shut down your PC windows will do it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I wouldn't turn them off before the PC's off. But you know what? I, I, another reason why I've gone back to hard disk drives and I do have some SSDs, some solid state drives in my PC as well, as well as an MVME card, which I think is like two terabyte. Now that is actually my C drive now. So that runs all my programs. And then I have the solid state drives for um, most of the time for graphics and um, samples anything that needs to be read pretty quickly. But the reason why I've gone back to hard disk drives for storage reasons is because of the read-write um, thing. Yeah, because there's only so many times and I mean, correct me if I'm wrong with this, because sometimes I'm I'm not 100% correct, correct in what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is from a lot of research, quite a lot of research and speaking to a lot of people who know a lot more about computers than I do. Um, although I would say I know quite a lot about computers at this point. Um, the read write, the, it, it, SSDs will only read and write so many times before they stop working. So don't rely on SSDs for storage is the main part of the story. Hi, Samuel Gold. Oh my God, that's such a nice cup of tea. Thing is, right, this is a big cup of tea because one cup of tea will be gone so quickly so quickly like it pains me how quickly I can drink a cup of tea and then this will last me longer and because it's a larger larger volume it stays warm for longer as well seriously <sighs> hello to Kid Dynamo sorry I'm not keeping up with chat very well use SSDs and there's no issue yeah, there, there, there's, there is an, an issue if, um, if I'm going to be, like, archiving stuff. But I love SSDs. In, in everyday waking life, I love SSDs. Um, but, yeah, like, I think... <sighs> What's the other one that people keep telling me about? raid drives or nav drives or something i can't remember now i can't remember but i really do love i do love hot swapping these because like this is this 
This is the old one. This is the old one. This is two terabyte. And you can pick one of these up. As long as you're willing to just like either put this in your machine or put it into a um, a caddy like this. You can get them for a lot cheaper. Raid, yeah. STIs. <laughs> but I have so many of these now. It's just getting ridiculous. I'm starting to label them a little bit. There we go. So yeah, top tip of the day. Please back up your shit. You don't have a backup unless you have four backups. And at least one of those backups needs to be outside of the room where you keep your backups. So, yeah. But I, I want to find out more about this raid stuff. And I might actually even go back to automatic backups because... Like if I lost stuff in one day of a pro of of studio work, I'd be well pissed off. Okay, so I've added my track. I have I have I'm I'm just gonna play mine first and then we can just get on with the rest of them. So this is a track that I have been working on on stream and off stream a little bit. Um mainly like I found what's been really helpful lately for me has been to not go into a studio session with the idea that I'm going to complete a full track in one day. And it's made me really mindful of everything that I'm doing. So say like in the beginning of this track that I'm about to show you, it was all about the drums and I thought industrial. I wanted something that was quite techno, rumble orientated. I tried out a few different ways of doing rumbles. Uh, I have my own patcher preset that I've made. Uh, with Fruity Patcher, which is um, a reverb, um, a delay, a filter, um, all running parallel um, to create that rumble effect. And then I tried the Maddox rumble plugin as well, just to see how I like that. And in the end, I think I used both of them um, and then did the drums. And then say like on a separate day, it would be the riff like about getting the uh, the riff down and then that was like a whole other fucking day. And then the next day it was arrangement and then the next day was um, mainly about um, the sound design of the riff. So when I was happy with the melody and kind of happy with the sound then I started to use macros and developing the sound through um, using one knob, one macro to um, develop the evolving of the sound. So say like a phaser, a filter, wavetable synthesis. So it, it goes through lots of different um, types of wave during the uh, how how it's like um, evolving within the track. Um, my point why I'm telling you all of this is because if you sit and you spend time methodically on each of these parts and don't rush any part of it, you will come out, you are going to come out with a, a much, much better piece of music. And you'll also understand where things have gone wrong, where there might be phase issues. Heads up says, I love macros. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, do you know, I haven't used Serum for years. Like the the one really that I use now more than anything is Avenger, um, and I love I, I love Avenger. Apart from Avenger, the only other synth that ever really made me feel so enthusiastic was one called Alchemy, and uh, that was before Logic bought it. But Alchemy was just amazing for for evolving sounds and and. Um, you could create snapshots, you could have up to eight snapshots and then you could evolve through them all like an XY pad but with eight areas. Uh, it was just so good. And if you are a Logic user, um, try um, try Alchemy because it's absolutely everything that you could ever want in a synth um, apart from Avenger. <laughs> Which I, I find Avenger really, really much on par with... Um, with alchemy but i loved alchemy i think it's because it was a time in in my production career where it didn't really matter what it, i wasn't really trying to make anything i was just enjoying finding like how this this synth would change how everything sounded um so yeah a big thing for me is sound design um 
and and also drums and shaping sounds and stuff. I get lost in that for ages. I, I, really, finishing a track is like a second, a secondary thing. But anyway, I'm going to show you how far I've got with this. I haven't named it or anything, um, but this is how far it is. There's no mix down. There's no EQing yet. There's nothing on the master. Um, it sounds good as it is, but it definitely needs. Um, it needs, it's about 90% done. And it also needs some effects and blah, blah, blah. Here we go.
So all the ideas are there. Everything's arranged in a way that I'm happy with now. It's literally just a case of it needs a good mix down and I need to start, um, I am going to start um, EQing, um, giving things its space a little bit more, um, getting it a bit brighter. But I find that, I don't know if anyone else can relate to this, but you know, like if you start EQing stuff too early on, um, before you've before you've put in all of your instruments, all your drums and everything, ultimately you always end up starting again anyway. So yeah, thank you, Gav. Yeah, I um, I've had a really good teacher. I've had a really good teacher. Like I've been with Guy now for ten years, and he's helped me so so much it's got to the point now where i'll just get on with it and then he'll come downstairs and i'll say can you just have a quick listen to this see what you think and it's really nice because he's like yeah that's really good and i'm like what what which is really nice like i'm i am more than aware that there's a lot of stuff that i can improve on um but let this be a word of encouragement to anyone who's thinking about getting into music production um the way that i always imagine i always analogize it to people is imagine in five years from now if you actually like five years is gonna go whether or not you want it to or not five years is gonna is gonna go no matter what and wouldn't it be great in that five years that ten years that you um do something that you set out to do. And all it takes is just doing it a couple of days, um, a couple of days a week. You know, if you can do it every single day, obviously it's going to get quicker for you. But yeah, um, Gav says, I always have a rough EQ. Yeah. But if you can get things sounding pretty good without needing EQ, then it's going to be, um, it's going to be worth it. But but yeah, a few of you were saying that, that riff's got Guyver's influence. Absolutely. Um, I think for this style as well, um, you know, he, he's shown me how he does riffs. Um, so it's embedded in me to know how, you know, like no one can do it like Guy at the end of the day. Um, but it's just 16th notes. All this is, is keeping part of the riff solid and not moving too many notes around. And then you use your inflections later on in the riff. So like 32 bars long, 32 plus 16 bars long, then start to evolve it by adding the uh, inflections. Um, and then also underneath that, changing the bass progression. Um, but it's very simple changes that can build up and show emotion in ways uh, that if you're not using a vocal, for example, um, will allow you to express an emotion but it's really it's really simple the, the the simpler that you you are when it comes to a riff the more memorable it will be and the more it will stick in someone's head um i do have i do have a tendency sometimes to overdo it and then i'll get guy to come down and have a listen and he'll be like no it's 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 like i'm on a roller coaster it's like Ugh! and i'm like okay i'll simplify it so yeah but yeah and and i like to um to ha hope that you know the stuff that i've learned along the way from guy i can um show you guys as well heads up says it's like sculpturing clay building a riff like that yeah yeah definitely and like i said this is why i take a whole session at a time on one aspect so don't try and rush it especially in the early days when you when you know what you're doing and you you know what sound you're going for or if you're collabing or whatever it's probably very different but if it's just you in the studio and you've got a curious mind and you, you know you want to know your breadcrumbs back again so say like if anything didn't start sounding right but you like the, all of the different elements separately then you can find where the issue is whether that be like a phasing issue um, something needing EQing or something actually needing to be taken out altogether. Uh. The art of production is reduction. Yeah. Not if it's schwanz. I love schwanz. It's just noise. Noisy noise. 
but it's it's clever noise. I don't like really distorted shrans. It has to be well done shrans. But yeah, you're right. Silence is a very good tool as well when it comes to music. I think I um I posted a meme on this recently about um dynamics. Just joking, saying, Oh, you don't need dynamics. What do you need them for, dickheads? Or the clay analogy where the sculptor is the sculptor is already there, you're just making it visible. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> just brick wall everything. Hey, look, if it works. Okay, next up we have got um, D3. Now, D3 is a wonderful lady called Donetta who I've met while I've been doing my work at Getaway Girls in Leeds. So for the last month, two months, I have been um, teaching girls in Leeds um, on behalf of Last Night a DJ Saved My Life which I'm an ambassador for, and Beatport, who have donated $15,000 from their diversity and um, and parity funding um, for these girls to have loads of new music equipment. Uh, Technics have donated um, two pairs of their new Mark 7s, so I've been teaching them on vinyl. And they've also got an XZ there. They've got five or six computers for music production, um, which has been amazing. And another one of the, the ladies who works there, Donetta, she is a spoken word artist who's been performing on the live gig and festival scene for 20 years. Um, so she she teaches the girls how to express themselves through spoken word, um, female empowerment, all that good stuff. Um, and what we've ended up doing is we've ended up um, doing half of our lessons apart and then bringing all the girls together and uh, showing the girls how to like make their own little loops and beats so that they can rap over them and MC over them. Um, so we've been working a lot together. And so I want to show you um, one of her tracks uh, that she's now got. It's on Bandcamp as well. So if you're into it, please, please go and support her. Go and follow her on Bandcamp. And yeah, I'll play the song now. Say what I want to say. Do what I want to do. Go where I want to go. See who I want to see. Me around, just give me my crown, cause I won't die. I ain't scared of 
How cool is that? That is my mate, Janetta D3. Please, please go and give her a follow over on Bandcamp. Honestly, she's so she's so amazing. We have so much fun at Getaway Girls. Uh, I proper bonded with her. Um, she's just amazing. And she's, she's such like, she's a really small, small person. And she's got such a big personality. Um, you know, she's a fighter. She really is. And she's just such a, a force to be reckoned with, but also so gentle as well. And I, I love being around women like that who um, who empower other women. She's just awesome. And she's so talented. So please, please go and give D3 a follow. Thank you, guys. But yeah, it's been amazing working with her. Um... And next up, we have got the Rough Mate cover. This is Janet Jackson Control, the Rough Mate cover.
So there we go. That is the Rough May Janet Jackson control cover. Um, I haven't heard the original of that. I don't recognise that Janet Jackson song. Yeah, I like the brokenness of that as well. Um, <clears throat> it's very raw sounding. And I think that's probably part of its um, charm, if you will. So there's not really much that I'm going to say because I know for a fact that what I would say is just going to be subjective and something that I would do, not like that should be done. So that's where I kind of like withdraw my need to say anything um, in terms of like what I would do. Um, but as it stands, as, as like, as like with the techno twist, as he puts it, I quite like it. I quite like it. It reminds me a bit of, do you remember the Crookers? Where it's quite like, kind of like low, not lo-fi, not lo-fi, but like low quality, but in a really, really banging way. So, yeah. Yeah, brokenness is a good way to describe it. Um, yeah, I, I liked it and it's got a lot of plays. So obviously a lot of people like it as well. So if you guys go and follow Roughmate, please. Twisted Glyph has asked a question. So if we can get our hive minds together. Uh, Twisted Glyph says, well, I said tech. I've acquired a set of M Audio BX8 D2 monitor speakers. Any recommendations for a set of stands? or wall hanging solution. They are loads bigger than I thought and heavy also. M Audio BX8 D2. Let me just see which ones I've got. Hang on. They're not they're not my my studio ones are Mackies, but I'm sure I've got M Audio BX something. Hang on. Okay, I've just had a look. Mine are BX5. So let's have a quick look on Google. What it, what was it that you've got? It was BX8 D2. BX8 D2. And you want to know about stands. Active Studio monitors. Just standard ones, like, just, yeah, I will not worry, like, you, I wouldn't wall mount them unless you need to. Because the issue with wall mounting them, if they're going to be for studio work, is um, I'm pretty sure that they have to, they, that studio monitors should be away from a wall, you know, because of, like, um, I have this issue in here, like my bass sounds a lot more bassy in my studio because my monitors are right next to the back wall because I'm limited for space and that can bring the bass to kind of like come back again so it feels like it's actually thicker in bass than it actually is. Um, so Chris says I've got BX8, it's very bass heavy. Standard stands, yeah. There you go. Just standard stands. Just don't overthink it. Yeah, I have M Audio, but that they're not for they're not for um, making music. But the ones that you've got say that they're studio monitor speakers, so they obviously are used for that. Um, everyone's got their own preferences when it comes to studio monitors anyway. Um, and it is literally what um, you get used to using. Sometimes it's good to uh, then um, have a pair of headphones, decent headphones. I've got ultrasone ones, but I hardly ever, ever use them. If I had to, if I couldn't be noisy, I would use them. But things definitely sound different on different um, monitors. Um, obviously doing a car test is very important um, and listing on different types of stereos but yeah you're welcome mate I'm glad that we could help 
Next up, we have got Stefano Ricci, and this is Love It All.
There we go, Stefano, Ricky, live it all. Really nice vocal. Um, and I'm just going to go through what some of the people have written in the chat here. Kevin Campbell says, super tune, love it. So 90s, says JP Taylor. I completely agree. And the fact that um, bringing on the summertime vibes, yep. The fact that Kid Dynamo was saying he can see the video to it, you know, and... Yeah, so Kidana says, obviously got a good progression if we can see the imaginary video to it. Absolutely. Kind of has a nice uh, GGD vibe um, to it. I can never say his name properly. But yeah, very 90s. Um, f yeah. And Coco Dillaz says that as well. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with all of that. Um, I, not, what was it? Roller skating in slow motion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, really, really nice. I'd have liked to heard the maybe the vocal, a few like vocal ae oohs vowels being introduced maybe in the in the intro, just so that we are expecting of a of a vocal. But that's that's all I really have got to say on that. Um but yeah, it's really nice. Um, and it was a joy to listen to. So thank you for sending it in, Stefano. Cheers, mate. And everyone, make sure you go and follow, please. Stefano's got like eight followers, so please rectify that. Okay. Now... We've got Incredibase and Houdini. Catch me or I go Houdini I come and I go Prove you got the right to please me Everybody knows Catch me or I go Houdini Time is busting like a solar eclipse Say you're watching on your phone a kiss It's your moment baby Don't let it slip Call me closer or you're red in my lips They say I come and I go Tell me all the ways you need me I'm not here for long Catch me or I go Okay, that was just an edit version of it that was sent in. Um, I really, really like this. And like a lot of people are saying that the switch up was great um, from the donk to the to the um, rolling bass line. Um, yeah, I I feel like it, it was very bright. I'd like a bit more mid and um, low mid content in it. 
I don't know if that's maybe like a mix down thing or not. Or maybe it's just my um, perception. But it just felt maybe like, I don't know if Heads Up is still in here, but Heads Up's like a bit of a, uh. a genius when it comes to this style. Um, but it felt like it could have been a bit thicker, a little bit meatier, a little bit heavier maybe either in the the kick um or the or the bass areas um just to bring it out a bit more but i really fucking love the ideas in this um it's really energetic and the switch ups are so fun like i couldn't stop smiling all the way through it um so yeah it's a it's a win definitely I really liked it. Thank you, Incredibase. Is who is Incredibase in the chat? Is that Styles Stylesy mate? Is that you? Who is it? Because I know sometimes you like to change your names around. Yes, it is. Yay! Yeah, you should be so proud of yourself, mate. And that vocal's really cool. I really like that vocal. Good work, mate. Okay, next. I really enjoy mixing different elements together. Good. Well, I like that you like mixing different elements together because it sounds epic. And you've inspired me to do that as well. I always forget, like, I love hearing it, hearing when people like go from like, uh, maybe like a rumble kick and then like, or a kick with a rumble and then go into like a hard style gated kick or something and then maybe like a pew, a pew pew. And I never ever have done that in any of my tracks. I think it's just because I forget to do it. Like at what at what stage in, in making the track do you swap those elements out? Do you wait until you finished it and then go back in or is this something that you do section by section? Because... If it was done section by section and you went in there knowing that that's what you're going to do, it's probably something that um, I would remember to do. But more likely for me, it would just be like a, a, a an afterthought. Mm. It's usually on the spot decisions. Cool. Well, it worked. Can I just say a big thank you to Cornish Rainbow, my Kerry. Thank you for subbing again, mate. I love you. Thank you for supporting me. Okay, next up we've got Coco Dillas is back. And this is Coco Dillas with Kira Taki. And this is called Want Me. It's 
just begun And I know that I've tried to turn away But I keep coming back To you in your arms, baby Baby, yeah. Wow. Coco Dillers, take a bow, mate. Again. Producer goals here, again. I love the vocal as well. I liked her lazy way of singing it. Um, I love the tropical elements in, in here. And I also love the little melodic lines you do, like... Doo -doo 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 -doo. Not quite like that, but... <laughs> Like it's it's re like the bit just before the breakdowns, like it's yeah it's really nice. I'm glad you know what I'm talking about, but they're nice little transition points and they keep the ear interested. If that makes sense. The listener, the one with the ears, um, and I, I love those little those little moments. Um, again, yeah, very tropical sounding. Is it tropical house this style? Yeah, I felt like I was on holiday as well, Twiddle Music. Yeah, 100%. It's just a feel-good track. I could hear that being, you know, like when you're getting on the plane, going somewhere on holiday, and they have, like, the music in the background, you know, as you're sitting down. That's kind of like... Like, it just, it makes, I think it was, it was Kid Dynamo said, I want to go and drink a Malibu now. Yeah, soft top down, soft top down, and go for a cruise. Yes, and isn't it amazing how you know you can write a piece of music that evokes those emotions and 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 gives those thoughts in your mind? Very, very important if you ever wanted to get into sync music. Um, you know, music music for uh, adverts and that kind of thing, and um, film music for the move, moving image because it's very important to be able to convey a message or an emotion or a story within music um, in those fields. So it's a very good skill to have. Hello, Wayne. How you doing, mate? So yeah, thank you very much for sending that in, mate. Next. We have got DJ Sweeter, Don't Act Fool. This is a pre-master. Oh! 
What's up? How you doing, love? I swear you look familiar, love. Something about you got me tripping, huh? Wait a minute, where I know you from? Where I know you from? Where I know you from? We can get up out of here and go and have some fun. But first you gotta tell me where I know you from. When I step up in the party, I be acting a fool. I'm turning up. There we go. That is DJ Sweet. I don't act fool. Can I just say a massive thank you to Insanity DJs for raiding. How is your stream? Who is playing? Thank you so much, gang. Welcome in, everybody. As uh, a lot of you will know, this is the demo drop that we do every Tuesday where we listen to your music. So if you are a budding uh, music producer. Uh, DJ Sharp, yay! Did you have fun? I hope so, mate. Oh, brilliant. I love it when, when there are, because there's quite a few channels now. And Insanity DJs is one of my favourite ones where I love just popping on because I never know who's going to be playing. And I love that idea of it not just being a person's channel where it's more community-based. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, well, thank you for popping over, gang. Um, it's good to see you all. So, yeah, DJ Sweeter, Don't Act Fool. I really like this. It is a pre-master. I think it's going to really benefit from having a good master. A good, Hopefully, if it stems a stems master, that would be better than just sending the actual WAV at minus 6 dB or whatever. Um, I think if you... Because the, all the elements are there, right? All all the elements sound really good. And who was it who said the the someone worded it really well? It was something that Stalzi said about the the vocal. Vocal carries it nicely, and the bassline groove delivers. That's probably the best way to put it. I completely. I completely agree. Um, and I think that the elements in there are great. They just need someone. If it, like, I, I like getting my stuff mastered by someone else. And I recently had one of my tracks stem mastered from the stems. And it makes a big difference. Especially if they've got like hardware gear and stuff that, you know, experience in these things where... You know, my ears might let me down somewhat. So, yeah, I think once there's been a, a good mix down or a stem master of this, it's going to sound epic. But, yeah, I love all the... I, I love the, the vocal as well. And it was just fun. Oh, is it Edgar? Yeah, okay, so, uh, yeah, David Jackson is on it. Dave was the guy who mastered my track, that I'm on about with the stems as well. So if if you can, definitely get him to stem master it because he did such a good job on my one. And this is the style of music that um, he will be really, really apt at getting it sounding loud and thick and punchy and everything you need from that. <coughs> yeah, stem master is definitely the way. Definitely. So, yeah, well done. Well done, mate. Thank you for sending it in. Who have we got now? We've got Twiddle. Twiddle, and this is milling around.
So there we go. That is Twiddle milling around. Uh, just like Kidanamo said, I really like the name milling around as well. I think it suits it very, very well. Um, I personally, and also as a DJ, I would say don't have the second fake drop. So you, it's fine for your main uh, break. So on your main breakdown, we've got... Because I think it works really well there because when it comes in, it comes in really meaty um, and it's such a moment. But then we've got the second breakdown. I would say don't do it on the second um, breakdown. And my main reason for saying that, number one reason is if you're dancing, it takes people out of the groove yet again when they've already been tricked on the on the main breakdown. Number two, as a DJ, mix out time-wise. We've got five minutes, six minutes. We've only got one minute 30 left to mix out of it. And if you like doing long mixes, it could annoy someone or if the track that you're going to be mixing into has got like a two and a half minute set of drums which can be the case with a lot of groovy hard house um it will leave it going to drums then on the mix out so i would say um as a technical thing probably take out that second fake drop of the one that little one bar um break before it kicks in apart from that loved it it reminded me a bit of electro swing like that kind of style um and it really suits it because that like swing the electro swing stuff has got a lot of swing to it and a lot of groove and it really suits this style um and this tempo so yeah it was it was fun yeah that's all i would say twiddle uh, and that's what this show's here for. Um, you know, I want to get you signed. I want to get, you know, your music to be out there. And I also want it to be um, easy for DJs to, to play. Because it could be the silliest thing like that and, and, and a DJ won't play it. Um, there's actually a, a lovely track by M-Series. I don't know if Martin's still in. I can't play it because... Um, the the vocal comes back in again after the last break and it means that it kind of goes over the, the bass line of the next track that I'm playing in. Um, I think a lot of the time that's just down to an individual's arrangement um, style. But there's one thing, if you, if, if you are thinking about your music in terms of other people playing it, it's really important to think about it from the aspect of the DJ um, mixing in and out of it's it's not relevant if that isn't a problem for you obviously but if you want your music be, to be signed by a, a record label that predominantly sells records music to DJs um, it's definitely something to consider and an easy way to do that is just to look at other labels or look at labels uh, with a similar style and and literally copy the arrangement use it as a reference track um nothing wrong with that at all but you don't like i say that's only if it's important to you for for djs to play it i'd love to play this so i'd like you to take that little one bar break out because uh but but then again if you like a track enough you will find a way to mix it so but yeah really really loved it thank you to who was that who's just followed sick robot 42 thank you mate Next, we've got DJ Campbell. Everyone get ready. Hold on to your hats. Here we go. Mama, 
Wow. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I just have to go back to what <coughs> Campbell put in the chat. It was 12, 12 builds up, build ups. So Gaz Overseer said at DJ Campbell, are you the same Campbell that made No More Joking on Quash? He used to play the hell out of that. Yep. DJ Campbell made No More Joking. Um, such a tune, and so is this one as well. Yeah, it's um, yeah, the sound it's so big, like it's it's Tom Berry big, isn't it? Like it's it's, and it's a very, it's a very. I'm not going to say commercial sound, but like a lot of big DJs are playing Donk at the moment. It's just so energetic. I mean, I never stopped playing it, but it is nice to see like some of the bigger DJs and big festival DJs are whacking these kind of tracks in their, in their sets now. 
And sometimes I like that um, when I hear a DJ set where they don't have like a full set of bounce or donk. They just sprinkle a few in. But yeah, I'm going to be playing this one. Balearic Mo- Memories. And it, it is, it's got that 90s feel to it. Um, but bang up today as well. I loved what you did with the... With the... Um, You've got like uh it's your bass progression. Da, 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 da. So have you got two layers on there? You've got your donk and then there's like another like portamento base layer underneath it like with a slight pitch bend because it, it sounds really nice it sounds really big i'd love to know how you've done that or is it reversed or something on beat warp bass 17 bases We're going to have to get a DJ Campbell masterclass, I think, for how to do donk. <laughs> how do you do, 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 donk? Yeah, it's wide without being wide. Warp every kick, donk every offbeat. When you say warp, do you mean like multiply? So it's got a bit of like pitch bend to it. I want to. I want to know what you mean defining uh, warp. What you mean by that? I'll wait. I'll wait and drink the rest of my cup of tea. I what I need to know. Because it might mean different things in different doors, you see. Okay, so a warp bass under the kick and the donk on the off. Got it. Okay. And is this warp bass, is that the reverse sound that I'm hearing? Everyone making notes now. I put an old school garage warp bass on every kick. What? On the kick or on the offbeat? No, you're all right. I don't. I don't mind waiting. It's fine. On the kick or on the offbeat? On the kick. Oh, okay. That's what you mean by the bass. Warp bass on kick, but with bass cut. What? That's amazing. Yeah, well, this is the thing. Exactly, Stalzy. We we always help each other. And this is this is where this show is fucking amazing. Because Campbell knows that only he can do the stuff that he does. You know, and there's no like secretiveness. 
Do you know what I mean? And because we wouldn't be able to, we wouldn't be able to be who he is. And that's the sign of a very um, confident producer is one that will help others at the end of the day. Because it does sound different, doesn't it? So styles he's put there. So it ain't just a, a sub donk layered. Offbeat donk is two donks and a sub bass and a sub bass. <coughs> and this is another thing. Like, I don't think I know very many donk producers who even use a sub bass. But, and I always wondered why not. And I think the problem was is that they couldn't get it to like, um, to fit like in terms of, um, having enough room for it sonically. He is a very nice boy, isn't he? But you've done this so well. Like, I think having a sub there really, really helps to to bring it out and, and to make it sound wide without being wide, like we said earlier. Like, that's amazing. Yeah, it is all about teaching and helping each other grow because we all help each other then. Speaking a very foreign language to me, says Jen Bobs. Basically, warp on beat with bass on breakdowns without bass during main drops. You mean on you on about the sub bass? Off beat bass is the same throughout. Cool. Brilliant. <laughs> Do you know what I love about the, the, the types of people who listen to this show, though? You don't need to really understand what we're talking about. The fact that you're in an environment right now um, away from Facebook, but you could be watching on Facebook, but away from drama, away from other distractions. Um, if you've got an, an interest in this, just soaking it up is all you need to do because things will you'll remember stuff. So when it becomes relevant, you will remember these things and it will help you when you go in and if you ever go in with a, an engineer, just to know some of the terminology that we're on about. So you type like an old lady. That's, that's okay. I don't mind waiting for you, mate. Wow. Well, we've all learned something there. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. Thank you, mate. Thank you for sending it in. Go and follow Campbell, everybody, because he's he's lovely. He's a lovely he's a lovely boy. <laughs> yeah, I love I love I always look forward to doing my demo drops because it's it, I always learn something, and it, it it helps me to make sense of like the stuff that um, I'm talking about as well. And, and then it, it inspires us to get back in the studio, you know, to be accountable for for um, our music, our, our, our uh, music journey or starting it. That's why, it, why it's important. Yeah, Richie B knows about sausage fatness now and cowbells. What was the one I heard yesterday? Soft knob. Because I've got my, my virus TI snow on my... Um, DJ setup now, my hybrid DJ setup. I've had a virus TI Snow for years and I've not used it because I have the equivalent in a in a VST now. I use Viper. Um and it's got all of the old ROMs and all the old sounds. I think it's Viper that I use. Uh and then DSP five thousand or something. <coughs> so I don't use it anymore. Um, why was I talking about this? Oh yeah, soft knob. Yeah, thank you. And 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 Activa, actual Activa of trance fame. Because I, I put a, a thing on because I had a problem with with some tuning aspect in it. And he messaged back and he was like, "Oh, you can change it from soft knob to." And I was like, <laughs> "He said soft knob." Silly, silly. But yeah, you can be interested in this on this channel for this show in any way at all but it all goes in somewhere just like a soft knob anyway next we've got Caladesi and this is high season
There we go. That is Caladesi by Dr. High Season. Um, I had to stop it there. Now, one thing, the first thing I'm going to mention about this is we've got to six minutes in. It's actually nine minutes long, this track. So um, I feel this is uh, possibly something that has been made like live. You know, like, and then and then just like cut out as to be like a track, um, which would make sense. Um, because also, there were a couple of parts in it where the 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 root note kind of changes, and I quite like that as like little intervals, and it and it, it breaks it up in a way that I'm not expecting because usually in dance music that you'd make on a door, it would all be t- it would all be locked to that root that root note um and i quite liked the way that this had these little sections where it just went into a different key because it kind of like gave it gave it its moment and then came back again um however with that said um i think it's a little bit too long um if this is going to be a track to like um put out onto a label or, or to be um submitted to a label probably just whittling it down to the best kind of like five or six minutes would be enough and there's more than enough great stuff in here for that to happen in terms of like the sounds it all sounded really really clear everything has its space and it had a real dead mouse kind of feel to it as well which i really liked uh, in the in the drums which was really nice so yeah i really liked that is the person who made it in the chat, is that JP Taylor? Is this one yours? You're on Facebook, I think, at the moment. Is that one yours, JP Taylor? I think I recognise your name. Yes. Yes, it is. So let me just see what you've written. I produce my tracks to be in my live sets. So... Is this from a live set then? Am I right in assuming that? That this is from a live set? Nice balance to it, says Stalzy. Just extra oomph and depth needed. Hmm. I just feel like, um, oh no, no re, a pre-produced track, then I live mix them. Got it. Okay, cool. Yeah, um, I liked it. I did like it. Because um, the other thing that made me feel like it was from a live performance was there's not really any, like, uh effects in there and things like that not that it needs it at all um i liked it i did like it um and i I like the different the different ways that tracks sound when they're made in a different way for different reasons so you pre-produce the track and then live mix them that's brilliant that's awesome so there's this is the thing guys there's more than one way to go about making music so, you know, especially now with Ableton, Ableton's such a great, I mean, I'm predominantly FL Studio, but and I do use Ableton and I had to use Ableton when I was at uni and I went kicking and screaming into using Ableton, but my God, it's, it's so usable. It's so, there's so many things that you can do with it and it's, it's very integratable into a live setup um, if you want to use tangible hardware as well um which can be more interesting to people than just using a fucking mouse constantly um and getting backache and stuff you know you can stand up and you can do what you want to do kind of thing um but yeah i really i was really digging it i would just say that maybe whittle it down um to around five or six minutes um but that's me saying that as a subjective thing uh, Dead Mouse uses Ableton, possibly, possibly. 
he probably uses um in a, whatever door he's using he would probably say something like it really doesn't matter just use the one that you're you enjoy the most probably if he is using ableton or maybe even like pro tools or something like that it would be because he has a lot of hardware um yeah he would just use something that can integrate you know all the modular stuff quite quite easily and that's one thing that ableton does so well with um the utility plugins and um it, it's just plug and play when when it comes to um putting your hardware uh, into Ableton whereas I've always found with FL Studio it's been a bit more clunky to set up any hardware so would you believe Gar GarageBand wow are you using GarageBand JP Taylor record into Ableton Live brilliant Brilliant. Well, if it works for you, another person I know who uses GarageBand uh, is Lady Gaga. Yeah. And then when she's like happy with all the pieces that she's done there, then it will go to a studio and um, it will be done properly, whatever you want to call it, um, um, in whatever door they're using in the studio. But yeah, whatever works for you at the end of the day. So amazing thank you mate thank you for sending that in keep them coming and guys make sure you go and follow link is in the chat right now and now we have got a new track by the amazing dave owens ah! here we go
gets Dave Owens and Taco Bell. May. Live it, live it, live it, live it. Um, I, I do actually agree with a couple of people in the chat. Um, I'd like to hear um, the bass particularly a little tiny little bit louder. A tiny little bit louder just to like carry it forward even more. Um, but I'm sure that Dave, for whatever reason, has decided to mix it down in, in this particular way. Um, I just love it. Um, I, I can tell a lot of work's gone into this. There's so many different levels to it, different layers to it. Um, as someone else mentioned as well, a lot of dynamics in there. Um, yeah. It's it's exciting. It's like that edge of techno, but it's still hard housey as well. So, yeah, it's... Awesome. Awesome. I love the the little the the vocal mantra. All the little blippies, blippy blips. Um they reminded me of a track by Paul Janes. I think it was called Anybody Falling, or it could be the B side of that. Um it really reminds me of that kind of techno, like the these little blippy blip things in there. Um in the best way. But yeah. I loved it. I'm definitely going to be playing that. And the great thing about a track like that is I can play that in a techno set because it's kind of like hard groove, funky techno, but I could also equally play that in a hard house tune as well. Those are the kinds of tracks that really excite me for the studio as well because you get like this freedom for sound design and just creating like weird noises that will fit. And also... Um, also like using plugins for um you know just like little effects like people always use things like phases and stuff but i really like the like the panning and the delay effects on the vocal at points as well i think it was in the breakdown um because it messes with your head a bit and i really like that so yeah really really good energetic high energy track um and really, really simple. Like we're not moving from the from the root note on the on the the bass line. You know, it's 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 there. It's static, but in a good way. Like it's solid, so it keeps you in the groove. I think if it started moving up and down, you would end up like losing that momentum. So yeah, that's another another good thing about this kind of style is it's it's pretty simple in terms of you don't need to worry about you know things like bass progressions and the melodies as such but you have to keep it interesting um in different ways um and I, yeah that's what i love about that that style of, of of music making music um of this style so yeah thank you everybody that is now the end of today's show i don't know what i'm going to do with my life now i'm gonna have to wait until next next week when we will do it all again um where are we going who needs a raid do you know i don't think i've ever raided dj zillin so we'll go and raid dj zillin Hang on, hang on. Is he on? I don't think he's on. Hang on, let me just refresh. I think he's gone offline. I've done that before. I've sent you off somewhere. And like, when, when you got there, no one was there. I don't want that to happen. Who else is on that I like? Oh, hello. Oh, okay. DJ Zillin is in this place where I've just come into as well. So we're going to go and see Nikki Adams. Nikki Adams um, sends music in to the demo drop sometimes as well. So, yeah, we'll, we'll go there. Hi, people like us. Yeah, we're going to we're going to go here because I've not. I've not. um raided him before 
So let's go and see Nikki Adams. Let's go and say hello. Right, hi Ross. I did enjoy the drama. I'm going to go and and uh, and listen to a bit more of it. I need to go and get some uh, popcorn. Hello to Ivonne Pew as well. You did miss it. We started a bit early, but don't worry. You you'll be able to watch it back again. Um, yeah, and I will speak to you on Thursday. Mwah. Live you loads, guys. Bye.